How is it going? In today's video, I'm going to be covering the design, build, and functionality of the aluminum slide-out bed that I have in my Mitsubishi Delica camper van right behind me, as well as how you might be able to reuse a similar design in your camper van, especially if it's one that's smaller in size and you want to be able to reuse the sleeping area also as a seating area. So to get started, let's go ahead and hop inside the van and see how it works. So usually when I'm driving around in the van, this is what a bed looks like. I have both of the mattresses here on top of each other just so I have uh, visibility outside of that window for shoulder checking and etc. But um, if I want to be sitting in here, what I do is I set up this mattress against the back and I have a pretty decent seating area here. I can have my laptop here and do some work. This wheel well can serve as a nice footrest if you want. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put there yet, but for now it makes for a good uh, footrest. And if I want to turn it into a full-on bed, what I'll do is pull out the slide-up piece. This side extends out and you can see there's Velcro here to attach this mattress. I'll go on here in a second, but there's also Velcro on these bed slats in here that holds this in place so it doesn't slide out. Otherwise, while I'm driving out, there is too little friction between the slats and the mattress and then during a turn this will slide off but these two stacked on top of each other have enough friction where they won't slide off and then if i want to turn into a full-size bed i'll just pick that up and place it here now i have a bigger bed it basically comes up all the way to the wheel well leaving a little bit of room in case i want to store anything here or be able to walk through without having to hop over the wheel well. These corners don't really move with the Velcro in there. If I do notice it moving a lot, I might add more Velcro because there are only two right now for this second mattress piece. And then once I'm done and I'm ready to move, you know, I can comfortably stand here, disconnect this Velcro piece, and then easily slide this in let me show you how I actually secured this to the frame of the bed because as you can see it's pretty sturdy and it's not going anywhere and I didn't have to drill any new holes into the subfloor or into the frame of the van. I just reused the existing ones that are here. So let me grab the camera and show you. So this is the bed in a partially slid out position with the mattresses removed here and I did this to show you how it actually works underneath. And as you can see, it's two pieces. This piece with these alternating slats is the one that slides out. And when it's all the way in, they fit perfectly into each other. As you can see here, how it's secured to the frame of the vehicle is, as I said, using these existing mounting points that were there for the third row seats. And basically what I did, as you can see here, is just took these flat sheets of metal that had some holes in them already, um, used a cardboard template to sort of get an idea of what is the shape that I'll need to connect from this screw hole over here to the frame of the bed. And then I did something similar where you can see it's basically the same bracket just mirrored and it's holding the bed in quite sturdy. I was actually thinking of so a lot of people do in camper vans um, mounting the legs to the floor or the subfloor, which is like one of the reasons why you even have a plywood subfloor. But as it stands right now, it's quite sturdy and I've gone off-roading or soft-roading, I should say, with the bed in like this and I didn't hear any rattles or any bouncing. But if I do down the line hear anything, I might consider adding a bracket here for the front legs. That's quite a ways away from the wheel well and just mounting that to the ground but right now those are not moving at all so i really have no reason to and then also underneath here you can see there is a quite a bit of storage i have my uh, window covers right now and my battery on the front here i made sure that there was enough room with the driver's seat moved all the way back where it wouldn't make contact and when it's in the seating position that i use you can see there's some storage here if you want to store something taller that you wouldn't be able to store otherwise. And then at the back here, there's quite a bit of storage. I usually put my longboard here. And if I want to put in a backpack or anything, that would also go here. 
In terms of the slats here, I just used IKEA bed slats. I think it was for a twin mattress. It came with uh, 14 pieces and I used all of them here. I did cut those down at the edges because they were too long for the two pieces of the bed and then secured them with screws into the T-slot using the T-nuts that slide in from the side in here. You can also see there is some uh, wires for the lighting and also there is LED lighting, which let me turn it on here. You can see there is an LED underglow that goes under the bed, which makes for pretty nice um, lighting at night that's not too harsh on the eyes. And I also have this guy here, which you can turn into warmer lighting. Again, good for reading or looking at things at night when you're inside the van with all the window covers up because there's no other social light and all of it is of course connected to the EcoFlow which I unboxed on my channel and will probably be doing a review on down the line. But yeah, that's essentially it for the bed. How I did this was I designed it in SketchUp. I ordered all the aluminum 8020 pieces online as well as the hardware and then when I arrived I assembled it. I initially actually didn't include this piece back here and what I found was that this moving piece was sagging when it was all the way in at the back because there was too much weight. And these slide out pieces here that uh, slide on the, I don't know what the name of this is, but it's something that Aluminum 8020's website sells, but this wasn't strong enough to hold the back. So it was sagging at the back. So thankfully I had leftover aluminum for my order and I just was able to get that cut to size and then it's attached to the third leg back here um, in the middle. This middle one is only on the stationary piece, the sliding piece doesn't have that. And I did some calculations in terms of seeing what is the load that it can bear without bending too much. And for my use cases, I decided that I didn't need a third leg on the slide out piece here. But thankfully, if I ever do decide that, hey, now I want to be able to sit at this corner when it's slid all the way out, it's super easy to add a new leg. You just slide something in through the end. And I have these end caps on here. Um, otherwise, these corners are way too sharp. I've cut my legs way too many times when I was building this bed inside my room. And I actually built this all before I even got the van ready to be camperized just because I was like okay let's get this out of the way and you know you can it's totally modular so you can build it outside of the van and put it in when you're ready to use it and it's also super easy to take out like the only thing that's holding it in is these two screws as I mentioned earlier those two bolts and so if I ever want to take it out I don't know inspect the floor or redo the floor it's super easy and it's totally reversible which is something I was trying to do throughout the entire build of this van is just to make sure everything is modular. But anyways, let me throw up these mattresses back onto the bed and give you a view from that side and wrap up this video. So what I really like about this design, other than the fact that it's super modular and light, is that it leaves plenty of room for activities. So other additions in the future, if I do decide to, for example, I don't know, add a fridge here or add a table here, even if I want to have a portable table that I can set up any, anywhere, this allows for that. And then also it becomes a nice unit to mount all your lighting to. As you can see, I've done here. I will say that um, when I did the design for this, I miscalculated the height of the wheel wells and the original legs that I had were way too tall. So it got to the point where, where I was when I was sitting on it with this four inch faux mattress, my head would touch the ceiling, which is not ideal. So I ended up having to get all the legs cut down by about five centimeters. So I think they're at around 25 centimeters now. And if you look closely, you'll also notice that the legs on the moving piece are just a little bit shorter than the ones on the stationary piece. So this one and the one on the slide out piece there is shorter and the reason for that is so that it slides in and out easier and then once it's slid out and there's weight on it obviously it bends just a tiny bit so that these are actually load-bearing legs 
<laughs> Obviously, yeah, this would otherwise not just float in the air like that. This design took a couple of iterations. As I said, I had to get the legs cut and I had to add that third piece to avoid the sagging when all the way in. But overall, really happy with it so far. As I said, this sort of design isn't really specific to Delicas. You can use this kind of design in any other camper van and it makes for really good utility of the space that you do have. So as you might be able to tell by how much I'm sweating, it's a bit of a scorcher today. I'm gonna end the video here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you found this useful and if you're interested in the van and where I take it and the things I do to it, I'll be continuing to upload videos on this channel as things come up, the right opportunities for videos come up. Um, otherwise, you can follow the van on Instagram at 20gear and me on Twitter. I'll leave links to those down below. And until next time, bye-bye.